everyone. Welcome to Brooklyn Goss. Come on in. All right, here we are. Hello, my name is Erin. My company name is Loric Forum. Uh, I'm a lighting designer here in Brooklyn, New York. I started off as a theatrical lighting designer, gaffer, rigger in the New York City live entertainment industry. Um, you name it, I did it. Um, and that kind of discipline, that's really us using lights as tools in the air to shape and sculpt the objects um, that you see and you guys see in the entertainment world. Um, anything from a model rocking down a runway to like an intimate scene on Broadway to even the inside of MSG, what we're really doing is that we're sculpting the object, but it's happening in a controlled environment. So I started this endeavor here to see how could I make lighting objects um, that are influenced by their environment. As you can see here, we have the daylight coming in, we have the darkness coming from the back. So how do we do this? So this is a question you know, that I think I'm gonna go through a lot in my life, but my first answer to it comes with my iron cast glass series. From the beginning, what am I doing? I'm creating these iron tools that we're gonna cast glass on. Um, and what I do generally overall is I'm trying to allow all of these flaws and these aberrations to work their way into the iron, which is creating surfaces that allow the light to react and catch it in all these different and surprising ways. So starting from the iron, it's a simple lost wax casting process. Where we're pouring the iron into a sand shell. Uh, the sand shell is made because it was packed around a wax positive. The wax itself was poured onto a clay. So the clay, you know, I allow to crack and get bent and warped a little bit. For this part, I'd love you guys at home, just uh, log into the website. You can kind of poke around in there and see like detail shots of all the textures. And then when we pour the sand on, the sand itself doesn't really give all these flaws, but it does control how frosty or how smooth the glass is gonna be. All of you interior designers and decorators, you might ask, can I make my own textures? Can I make it out of flowers or, or petals? The answer is absolutely. And you don't even need to use my lights that we're gonna get into later. You can make tiles of glass to make like wall dividers or room dividers. So you can really have like wallpaper of glass that's your own custom texture to decorate the home with. This process, this iron cast uh, glass process, this is the first time this has ever been done. This is a process I discovered in North Carolina in 2017. Basically what was happening is that there was an iron class next door to my glass class and they were building an iron furnace and I said, hey, can I pour glass on top of iron? And somebody said, sure, why not? Let's find out what happens. So I'm kind of the person who's like, let's just see what happens, right? So the result of that is this completely new and unique process, and that's something um, that I continue to, to hope to explore in the future. Let's come on inside to Brooklyn Glass. I'm gonna put my mask on to protect my friends. And here they are. This is Josh and Alex, my two awesome assistants, um, who are also amazing glass artists in their own right. You know, I'm a lighting designer, not by trade, not a glass maker. So without, you know, people like them, I would never get nearly as far as I am today. So I'm very grateful to have them in my life. We're just going to do a little demo here for you guys. Um, we're doing a basic centrifugal casting where we're spin casting the iron. We're casting on jersey texture today. Um, and you'll see it's just a really simple process. And I think, Josh, what happened last time, just a little bit too much glass okay. was coming out. And then we... I um, want to get a little bit tighter. I think we want to split the difference between the first one and the second one. And overall, I think it's just a little too much glass. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what Alex is doing here is just torching the iron. We don't, want to, we don't want any thermal shock to happen when we ladle the glass right onto the iron. We don't want the iron to crack because that would be super crappy. Yeah. <laughs> Open up the furnace, that's 2,300 degrees in there of molten glass. So 23, probably 2,250 today. And we're just gonna ladle it right on. I'm using the tool to help Josh draw so he doesn't have to move his arms around. That looks great, buddy. Yeah, a little closer to center. Work your way inside. Wonderful. Nice. With that, give it another twirl. Really just allowing the force of nature of natural 
forces to get out there. This is a nice one, huh? And then I just press it down just to give it a nice even because when we put these in our lights, we do need to have some sort of consistency um, with the thickness there. How does it get to be a lens shape? Uh -oh, are we too late? Oh. oh no. There we go. Look at that. That's going to be a winner. This is a winner. Smush it around. Beautiful. And you just kind of let it cool and sit in there for a minute um, until it, it maintains its shape. And then we put it away in the annealer for I think like 36 hours. There you go, the camera, how beautiful. Wait, we have gloves on. We can touch each other for high fives. Yay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, so now we're going to come over here. I'm going to talk to you guys about some of my pieces over on this side of the room. This is the beacon pendant. This is the piece that started it all. So we talked earlier in the beginning about all these different textures of glass. And the reason that I, I use and, and fold in all these textures is because the photons of light they need something to, to hit against, so they disperse in different ways. Um, so I'm taking advantage of that. What looks like, you know, it just looks like two pieces of glass. What's happening is that the rear lens, you know, is projecting texture onto the front lens, and the front lens, conversely, is dispersing what's happening in the rear lens. So they have this play, and they have this symbiotic relationship of the two playing together. Further to that, and this is where you know you designers can start playing, what's happening is because of the position of the light bulb, you're seeing these rings of light around the edges. Um, and as you move around them, you'll see the rings happen. You'll see the rings move in different ways. And then you have these strings above and below. So specifically, the beacon is a two-dimensional object. It really is meant to be hung in front of like a window or a bookcase. They're scon I mean, it's technically a pendant but specifically hung from far above. Um, so you can hang it in places that a sconce won't go. So you're playing with these, you can play with scale and you can kind of sketch these circles and lines against your wall um, and kind of really start playing with them in a bunch of different ways. Like I really, really cannot emphasize enough. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Just to touch on these accessories here on the bottom, I added these in. It really brings the eye down to kind of help like anchor the piece in the space. So guys, what you're seeing is these pendants hanging in middle space right now, and that offers them a little bit of clarity. But woof, if you had them behind a wall or against a wall, which is really where they're designed to be, you can see instantly, if I move this in and out, how it's changing how the light interacts with the pieces here. Um, and that's something to consider as you're designing these for your home. So that is the... That's the beacon pendant, the one and only, the original. Let's go over this way. <laughs> this is my new creation. I love this piece. This is the surround pendant. Uh, from the beginning, since I started making this glass, the question has always been, how do you hold the glass? How do you hold it without like cutting it or interrupting and just letting the glass be what it's going to be? So what you just saw us make is a surround lens with this negative space in the middle. So you can see that it's just clamped in this ring in this one spot. We don't cut the glass, we don't drill the glass, we don't do anything to the glass except hold it in this one exact spot. This wide steel band, as you move around, provides several functions. We have two hanging positions here. So right now, this, um, excuse me, this pendant can tilt completely, or we have a hanging position in the back so you can hang it straight down and you can style it in a bunch of different ways. Just like the beacon, the glass needs something to play off of. If you just had this one lens in front of a light bulb, it's just going to be perhaps not as interesting. So I paired it with the reflector. What's happening here, if you look in the front, the relationship of them is such that the reflector is placed so it's pulling, again, that hylation around the edge of the glass, but also visually, proportionally, the size of them from the front. You have the light bulb circle, then the reflector, then the glass in this really nice relationship. Now, if you look up here to the top, we have this beautiful canopy with these two stainless steel rings. 
If you go again to my website, you go lauricform.com sketches, you can see all the different ways that both the beacon and the surround can be used. Specifically, they are adjustable and customizable. You can have them in all sorts of different arrays and different configurations, and that sketches part of my website will help you figure out how you can arrange them. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you to Wanted, thank you to ICFF, thank you to everybody who's had me here today. Uh, enjoy the rest of the sessions and I'm looking forward to your questions later on. Thanks so much.